Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. As we get further into spring, the chances of severe weather happening are only gonna get worse. Where I live in Texas, thunderstorms and tornadoes are a big problem this time of year and the chances of losing power at one point or another are pretty high. Like even this morning, we currently have 13,000 people without power across the state because of some thunderstorms that are blowing through. And whether you're dealing with storms like these or hurricanes later in the year, having a backup power source is an absolute must. Today we're going to take a look at the Jackery 2000 Plus Solar Generator. It's an excellent option whether you're looking for a portable power option or something to serve as backup power for your home. We'll go over its specs and features, show what it can power, and how you can integrate it into your home's electrical system to power your most important devices. I'd like to thank Jackery for sending us the 2000 Plus to take a look at today and for sponsoring this video. The Jackery 2000 Plus, in its most basic form, has a capacity of 2 kilowatt hours. However, you can expand your system using extra batteries like this one. One 2000 Plus can handle up to 5 of those extra batteries, giving it a potential capacity of 12 total kilowatt hours. But you can also link two 2000 Plus units together and then hook 10 extra batteries to that, which would give you an overall capacity of 24 kilowatt hours. The system that I have consists of the main unit and one extra battery and that'd be sufficient for most normal power outages and since it can be recharged via solar, it would work well for longer term situations as well. Connecting your extra batteries is very easy. All you need to do is plug the cable into its corresponding ports on the main unit and spare battery. The ends of the cord are labeled so you'll know where to put them and they're designed so that they won't go into the wrong port. Both the main unit and extra battery use lithium iron phosphate batteries, which can go 4,000 cycles until they reach 70% of their original capacity, which translates to around 10 years of regular use. This is a big improvement over older generations of solar generators that use regular lithium ion batteries. Those can go around 500 cycles before they reach 80% of their original capacity. For output, it can handle up to 3,000 running watts and 6,000 surge watts from its standard wall outlets or the three-prong 25 amp port. And that's quite a bit more than other devices that I've tested that are similar in size to the 2000 Plus. And power like that's enough to handle multiple large appliances at the same time. If at any time during the course of this video you think you may want to check out the 2000 Plus or any other of Jackery's solar generators, then be sure to use the links in the description below. When it comes to ports, the 2000 Plus has four 110, 120 volt AC outlets, two USB-A ports, two USB-C ports, and a 12 volt car port. But one of the things that makes this unit really impressive is that it also has a 25 amp plug. This will allow you to use it to power multiple circuits in your home using a transfer switch, and I'll show you how that works later in the video. Another big improvement of the 2000 Plus is that it charges very quickly. They've ditched the old charging brick that has historically come with power stations in favor of a more streamlined AC charging cable. Using that, you can recharge the main unit by itself in around two hours. When it comes to solar charging, the 2000 Plus can be connected to six of Jackery's 200 watt solar saga panels, which can take it from zero to 100% in as little as two hours. But if you're using just two panels, you're looking at around seven. But one thing I really like about Jackery solar panels is that they're really easy to use. All you need to do is unfold them, set the legs out, and you're done. These 200 watt panels also come with a case that'll help protect them from accidental damage, along with a siding gauge that you can use to help your panels collect as much solar energy as possible. To connect the Jackery 2000 to solar panels, start by connecting any extra batteries that you have to the main unit, then after you've done that, set out your solar panels. As you're doing this, go ahead and use the siding gauge to adjust them so that they're in the best position possible. After that, connect the cable to the panel's output port on one end and then to the power station's DC input on the other. When you do this, the power station should turn on automatically and start charging. It's a little difficult to see on the screen, but that's an issue with my camera and not the unit's display. Then you can also recharge the 2000 Plus using the 12 volt port in your car. This won't be the fastest way to get the job done at around 25 hours, but it is useful if you're using it while on a road trip. 
The main unit of the 2000 Plus weighs around 61 and a half pounds, but it does have wheels that make it easy to move around. And one of the biggest reasons for that increased weight is those lithium iron phosphate batteries that I mentioned a second ago. It's kind of a trade-off. They're a little bit heavier, but you get much longer service life from them. Another thing that helps its portability is that it has a telescoping handle, which can extend 21 inches from the top of the unit and stores flush when not in use. Another nice feature of the power station is that it's compatible with Jackery's app. You can use that to monitor power levels, turn outputs on and off, and change settings like charging speed and unit timeout. The 2000 Plus also comes with a three-year warranty that can be extended an additional two years by registering it for free on their website, but if you order directly from them, then you automatically get the full five-year warranty. And like all solar generators, the Jackery 2000 Plus does have some significant advantages over traditional gas generators. Since it can be recharged using sunlight, you don't have to worry about storing large quantities of fuel which could either go bad or would eventually run out if a situation lasts long enough. Power stations are also safe to use indoors since they don't produce any harmful fumes. That's nice if you're someone who needs something like a CPAP machine. You can just roll it up next to your bed, plug that device in, and you're good to go. Then, since solar is a lot quieter than traditional fuel-based power options, it's going to draw a lot less attention to you if you're using it during an emergency, and you can also use it in campgrounds that don't allow those loud gas generators. Now, when it comes to devices that it can power, it should be able to handle anything that you would realistically want to use during an emergency. On the low end, it'll have no problem keeping your phone charged, and you can also keep other USB rechargeable devices like flashlights and radios going for a very long time. You can also use it to recharge other kinds of batteries. I like to use rechargeable AA, AAA, and D cells with solar generators since they'll allow me to keep things like lights and fans running almost indefinitely. The 2000 Plus also works well for recharging power tool batteries in addition to running traditional tools like drills and saws. You can also use those batteries with powerful backup lighting methods, fans, and other devices. But if you have something as powerful as the 2000 Plus, you're also going to be able to run your corded tools as well. And I think that's an important consideration when you're talking about a backup power source. Because while things like lighting and food preservation are important, you may need to make repairs to your home after different kinds of disasters. The storms that we're going to be dealing with in the next several months can damage roofs, windows, and other parts of your home, and you may need to make temporary repairs to prevent that damage from getting worse. I was able to run every saw that I own, including my sliding miter saw and compact table saw that I showed a second ago. I was also able to run my old circular saw, which actually draws more power than the others. Being able to run those will allow me to cut 2x4s to the correct length and also rip sheets of plywood if I need to cover a window. And even if you aren't having to make repairs after some sort of disaster, being able to run your power tools without having to use a traditional gas generator is really nice. I've done off-grid building projects in the past and having a generator running in the background non-stop can get a little irritating. And then also, there's a lot of times when you're working on those things like you're measuring, you're not using your power tools at that particular moment, so really you're just wasting fuel. Whereas with something like a solar power station, it's an on-demand power source and the amount of energy that drains from it while it's just sitting there is going to be a lot less than the fuel that you waste during those times. Then inside your home, you'll be able to power pretty much anything that uses a standard 110, 120 volt AC plug. That includes things like your refrigerator and if you have one, standalone freezers. And since the 2000 Plus has such a large capacity and can handle up to 3000 running watts, you should have no problem running multiple appliances at the same time. I, for example, have a side-by-side -side refrigerator and a small box freezer, and the 2000 Plus can run them both simultaneously without any issues. Appliances like this are good to pair with the 2000 Plus since it has a 20 millisecond EPS, so you don't have to worry about those devices not working if a power outage happens when you're away from the house, either at work or doing something else. You'll also be able to run your washing machine, which is nice if a power outage happens during the middle of a load. Just plug the washing machine into your jackery, finish your load, and then hang your clothes to dry. 
then it's also powerful enough to run any countertop kitchen appliance that you have that includes your microwave, crock pot, rice cooker, electric griddle, and induction plates. And being able to cook indoors would be very beneficial in a lot of situations. Maybe there's a weather event going on outside like there is now. I don't want to go out and cook anything outside right now. Or maybe you're dealing with a longer term situation where food's starting to get scarce. That's a really bad time to fire up the charcoal grill. Being able to run your kitchen devices from something like the 2000 Plus would also be useful if you lived in an apartment where using a fuel-based camp stove could cause issues. Then of course you'll be able to power other household items like hair dryers, curling irons, and straighteners. That's not something that I'm too terribly worried about, but if you're somebody who does use those kind of things and you're needing to get to work, then it could be very useful that way you're not showing up to work looking like you just fell out of a tree. And while you can use the 2000 Plus to power appliances and other devices individually, you can also integrate it directly into your home's electrical system. The 25 amp port that I showed earlier can be used to connect the power station to an inlet box or transfer switch, allowing the 2000 Plus to run several devices in different locations of your home at the same time. Probably the easiest way to do this is to go to Jackery's website and purchase the version of the 2000 Plus that comes with the transfer switch. It'll include the power station, an extra battery, two 200 watt solar saga panels, and then the transfer switch itself. And one thing that I really like about this setup is that it uses a standard transfer switch and standard connectors. First of all, that means that any qualified electrician should be able to install that for you. And then second of all, let's say that you have a traditional gas generator as well. As long as that has the correct connectors and you have a cable long enough to connect the two, you should be able to use your gas generator with that transfer switch as well. So it just gives it a little bit more versatility. We installed this one at my parents' house since they didn't have a backup power source yet and the installation only took around two or three hours. To connect the 2000 Plus to a transfer switch, make sure that the unit's turned off and that the transfer switch circuits aren't set to generator power. Then connect the provided cable to the power station's 25 amp port and the other end to the transfer switch's inlet. Turn that in slightly to lock the cable into place. After that, turn on the main power to the Jackery and then turn on its AC power. Then move back up to the transfer switch and move the circuits from line to generator power. I like to do them one at a time, especially when it comes to circuits that are powering things like refrigerators that require more startup watts. For this setup, we wanted to prevent their food from spoiling, but also allow them to do work or other essential tasks without interruption. They have a refrigerator in their kitchen along with an additional fridge and upright freezer in their garage. We also tied the circuit that powers the garage door motor into the transfer switch so that if a power outage is going on when they need to leave to work, they'll be able to get the car out without having to do that manually. Then, since my dad works from home when he isn't traveling, we tied their internet router into the system along with the circuit that powers their microwave so that they can at least heat some food up. Then we also included their washing machine so they don't have laundry soup if a power outage happens partway through a load. Overall, I'm a really big fan of the 2000 Plus. I actually got excited while I was reviewing it, and that's usually a good sign because I've done a lot of solar generator reviews over the years. If you think you might want to pick one up or anything else that Jackery offers, then be sure to use the links in the description below to do that. And once again, I'd like to thank them for sponsoring us today. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.